I make my way towards the Nebraska-Iowa border riding over the Missouri River on the Bob Carey pedestrian bridge. It's been 33 days and 1,500 miles since I left Florence, South Carolina on my way across the United States. And even though I'm enjoying every day, I have my thoughts on the Badlands and the Rocky Mountains ahead. Leaving Omaha right now and it's been a really fun time with Scott this last week, 200 miles from Kansas City. And now I'm heading over to uh, Iowa. Gonna try to do 300 miles in six days or seven days, six days before this next north wind comes this next weekend. It's Wednesday today. I'm gonna have a tailwind if I can hurry up in four or five days, I can probably take advantage of it and get there. And there's a lot more camping options here than I have had, so I'm looking forward to that. I wouldn't mind spending more time in Omaha like I'd rather, like I would like to do in a lot of places I visit. It's a really cool city. Seems to have a lot of history I would like to know more about. But I gotta keep writing. I got the Badlands in my mind. <laughs> With a population of 2,800, the city of Missouri Valley, Iowa was conceived in the late 1860s while Omaha, Nebraska and Council Bluff, Iowa were in the early stages of growth. Its existence was in large part due to its proximity to the Missouri River, great farming land, and the coming development and construction of the Chicago and Northwestern Railroad. Even though by 1930 Missouri Valley grew to a population of 5,000, it soon contracted due to the Great Depression and from suffering damaging droughts in the Northwestern Territory. After spending over one month on the roads of the United States, I have learned to appreciate the respect that full-time users of all roads have for each other. Truckers, especially, are my favorites right along with the motorcyclists. Both are very much aware of you and respect my slow presence on the edges or shoulders of the roads. They almost always wave back and oftentimes reach out to me first. Holy crap! I thought that dog was gonna get me. He was big and fast. Thank God it was windy. Woo. He looked mean. I was going like 18, 20 on the paved road, downwind, just cruising. I know now I'm gonna get in my camp spot easy in the next 20 miles. It's only 3.30 and I've been doing a really good time because of the wind no traffic and then I end up in some farm road like this I've met my challenge today I thought I had it down downwind going fast then I got into that gravel road that slowed me down, but still going downwind, and now I'm a few miles down from a, a crossing road, a perpendicular road that I might be able to get on the interstate. That's the only good thing that is paralleling this road, but this is uh, not going to happen.
Bummer. I gotta backtrack into the wind. So I'm backtracking now. I gotta have, I gotta figure out a way to get on the interstate, which will be a lot of fun because I'm climbing wind again, and it's gonna be downwind. I got so much time today though, because I've had the wind on my back that I'm not worried about getting somewhere. But I am worried about how I'm gonna get on the interstate. It's right next to me. I don't know if you can see it from here, but I just gotta find an entryway somehow. If not just an exit. Let's see what I can figure out. Sioux City, Iowa, with a population of about 85,000, was founded in 1854. It is the navigational head of the Missouri River. This means that general cargo ships cannot travel beyond this point of the river. Leaving Sioux City behind, I enter into South Dakota on my way to the city of Vermilion, population 10,000, and home to the University of South Dakota. Before getting there, I ride through the center of the cities of Jefferson and Elk Point. Both are beautiful, quaint, and friendly. On my first day riding into the state, I am unaware of the lasting impression that South Dakota will leave on me after spending the 12 days it took me to cross its length. The only hill today, but I'm 75 miles in. I'm coming into Vermilion, South Dakota. There's a city park that you can camp at. I'm only a couple miles away. I've lost track of how many times I've uh, stopped at a post office. I think it's like five or six times. I think this might be six. I'm in a Vermilion, South Dakota, 
and I'm only going to do 40 miles today to a Lewis and Clark recreational area that looks amazing right by the river. Anyways, last night I took out more stuff. There's just clothes that I don't use and parativas that I don't use either and uh, what else? I uh, just like stuff I don't use and the bag which I don't think I need and I got the setup now like this with my tent on top that way I can get into the that way I can get into the bags in the back which I haven't been able to it's nice to have access to the bags all of them any time of the day to organize and to get stuff going anyways I'm gonna send this home and see how it feels that was five and a half pounds I think I've taken out like over 30 pounds that I've sent home in all those times. I'm getting ready for the Rockies. It's still a ways, but I'm thinking about them and thinking about climbing for a long time, and I think that's gonna help. I'm learning so much in this process and uh, really making use of it. Today proved it. I didn't need to carry that bag or some of the clothes I had, just a long sleeve shirt and pants and this and that. Anyways, I like the way my bike works now. What they're saying about South Dakota is true. It's just a straight up flat ground forever. I'm looking at my miles to do straight before I get to a town. It's 24 miles of just flatlining. I've been battling a headwind for 20 miles, keeping it at 8 miles an hour, but it's tiring. It's flat ground, but it's just monotonous. Not my favorite, but I'm, uh, I'm getting it done. <laughs> I got a cool camp spot tonight, I can't wait to see. Had the wind in my face all day. It feels like you have a flat tire. And I got it, I got a four, five more days of somehow the wind coming out of the west, which is I think predominant. And I'm cranking. I'm gonna get used to it. I'm gonna push ahead and try to get used to that routine instead of having the wind behind me or up and down hills and which is totally different. I think the, the head-on wind is uh, something that I need to get used to now.